We're all stupid. We're all going to die. Yesterday, I had an old friend visiting me for a short while. Of course, we kept social distancing while he stayed inside his car. He's a nice guy. I like him. Two months ago, he was involved in a major car crash. The car was totaled and he had major concussion. He was lucky as it could have been much worse. He's a big guy and he was up and about within days. Anyway, he was telling me that he was in a hospital. Asked me if I knew what black seed is. I'm familiar with it. I guess he took it as some kind of validation. So, for the last couple of weeks, he's been ingesting two tablespoons of that stuff every day. Now, who could have predicted that something would go wrong, right? Soon, he started having horrible stomach cramp and other symptoms. Of course, the hospital, after checkup, informed him that it's not coronavirus, but he kind of got it from that damn black seed. They wanted to keep him overnight to ensure that he would be all okay. But the moment the hospital wanted to inject him, he immediately discharged himself. At this point, he looked at me and earnestly uttered the following, You know it could have been a vaccine, right? Oh, I would have face pumped myself, except we shouldn't be touching our face. Oh, damn you, Corona! This is what I find most vexing. So they would ignore years of research, peer reviews, experiments, and real data from scientific community, but would listen to a moron on garlic curing coronavirus and keep eating bulbs of those things raw. Well, to be honest, at least that person is unlikely to spread the virus, as after that many garlics, it's not only vampires, but no humans would come near either. Another friend is currently overdosing himself on vitamin C. I recommend a daily amount is 64 to 90 mg. And this guy is going through at least 4 gram a day. That's a whooping 44 times more. Again, he's also lucky as his choice of ignorance was vitamin C. Well, if you see yourself in any of these guys, please stick around. I promise this will not take too long and almost surely time spent here would be rewarded. Think of it like a seed. You, the viewer, plant one and it will come back to you. Multiplied. It is an investment in your faith and your future. Hey, did I manage to keep a straight face there? First, let's talk about black seed oil. I'll be honest, this one is a hard one to decipher. A search on Google returns a lot of results. You can see some of the common searches, Dear Darwin. Okay, first link. Interesting. If you buy something through a link on this page, we may earn a small commission. Hmm. It doesn't mean anything, but why does it make me feel weird? Okay. In our mentalism business, this is what we call a qualifier. There are lines that are written as a fact. For example, Nigella sativa is a small flowering shrub with purple or white tinged flowers that grows in Eastern Europe, the Middle East and Western Asia. So that's simple fact. But then there are way too many has been shown, has shown promise, It's possible that it can increase the effect. You get the gist. The only real thing I would pick from this page 
is this line. Remember, black seed oil shouldn't replace prescription treatments that a doctor may give you. Note the next line. But it does have some beauty benefits that can work in addition to the treatments to enhance your skin. Can work is not the same as will work. When you take a paracetamol, you know it will work. Where, if you pray to the mighty god Ra, it can work? <laughs> well, finally, this page was reviewed by Deborah Rose Wilson. Well, let's find out more about her, shall we? So this is their team. We have got a uh, medical doctor, medical doctor, a uh, dietitian, pharmaceutical. Now where is she? She is quite a lot of doctors I can see. Ah, there she is. So Deborah Rose Wilson and herbal medicine, complementary and alternative medicine. And she is a holistic healthcare practitioner. Well, by the way, I'm not dissing her for that. Anyone from any background may have a valid opinion. I mean, look at me. But in this case, with so many real doctors on the page, it would have been nicer if it was reviewed by one of them. Also, I didn't see any links to establish any of the claims made on this page. Next site, as this is getting quite long, I'll skip through most of it. You should already know to look out for qualifiers. Full disclosure, at least this one has links to a research paper for its claim. Let's look at that conclusion. Interesting. However, due to the high heterogeneity for body weight and limited high quality studies, the findings should be declared by caution. Note the use of limited high quality. I cannot find details on how many people were in this test, how many were in the control group, and what does limited really means? Is it 1%, 2%, 10%, 20%? .000, .000? One last thing I would like to show on this page. Many studies have shown that it may have health and cosmetic benefits for various medical and skin conditions. Although these studies often use animal or cell models rather than humans. This might be a good time to understand how a typical drug is developed. Step 1. Discovery and development. This development process also gathers information on dosage, side effect, interaction with other drugs, and so on. Only the promising candidates move to step 2, preclinical research. Before testing a drug in people, researchers must find out whether it has the potential to cause serious harm, also called toxicity. This is done on cell models and animals. Usually, preclinical studies are not very large, however, these studies must provide detailed information on dosing and toxicity levels. After preclinical testing, researchers review their findings and decide whether the drug should be tested on people. Step 3 is clinical research. We might have tested it on animals and cell models. We still need to ensure it works with this complex organism called human. This is an extensive three-phase process with selection criteria, control group, and all the jazz. At step 4, all collected data is submitted to FDA, and after examining the data, they make the decision to approve it or not to approve it. Finally, step 5, FDA monitors all drug and device safety once products are available for use by the public. This is why you will never find an alternative medicine that is FDA approved. No, it's not the big brother, the government, or big scary pharma companies. It's simply the guidelines we follow for our medicine. Remember earlier we were looking at the site where it mentioned 
although these studies often use animal or cell models rather than humans. This is step 2 in our process. In black seed, there is no step 1, there is no discovery or development. Please understand it for what it is. My recap for black seed. I couldn't find any actual studies on black seed oil on human. We have no actual data on toxicity. Ah, can this be the source of all the misunderstanding? Wait, wait, I'm psychically getting a message from some of you guys. You're shouting. But black seed oil has been shown to have antioxidant properties. Well, okay, okay, I agree. It's an easy mistake to make. In FDA step 2, before testing a drug on people, researchers must find out whether it has the potential to cause serious harm, also called toxicity. So, it's not the same toxic that your supposed antioxidant properties deal with, right? Vitamins are classified as either fat soluble, that's vitamins A, D, E and K, and water soluble like vitamin B and C. This difference between the two groups is very important. It determines how each vitamin acts within the body. The fat soluble vitamins are soluble in lipids, that's fat. These vitamins are usually absorbed in fat globules that travels through the lymphatic system, I'm sorry, these are medical terms, of the small intestine and into the general blood circulation within the body. These fat soluble vitamins especially vitamins A and E, are then stored in body tissues. Fat-soluble vitamins, once they have been stored in tissues in the body, tend to remain there. This means that if a person takes in too much of a fat-soluble vitamin, over time, they can have too much of that vitamin present in their body, a potentially dangerous condition called hypervitaminosis, Literally, too much vitamins in the body. Thankfully, vitamin C being a water soluble, you can imagine what happens, right? Taking more than the upper limit for vitamin C isn't life threatening, but you may experience side effects like abdominal pain, cramps, diarrhea. People with hemochromatosis are in danger of a vitamin C overdose, though. This condition causes your body to store excessive amounts of iron, which is exacerbated by taking too much vitamin C. This condition can lead to body tissue damage. Long story short, I explained what he is doing has no benefit and may be bad in some cases, but thankfully his vice wasn't vitamin A. There is nothing to recap on this one. Of course, you might disagree on FDA's RDA. In that case, I can guarantee that there would have been studies that are documented with factual data.